Um, well, I've got five pictures for you linked below. I'd like for you to click on them. Isn't it nice to have a YouTube photography channel where someone actually knows how to fix cameras and fix them for years and years and years to tell you what the source of the problem is? Um, <clears throat> a bunch of people asked me, they said, well, why did not the Sony a7R have this issue, but the a7R2 does? Check the five pictures below. Um, I don't know what anybody's going to say about this video right now that I'm making. These are the pictures. These are the teardowns, and I have the side-by-sides. What's the issue? The heat sink, the placement of the motherboard, and a design flaw, um, where the actual uh, heat sink of the motherboard actually comes up to secure and replace one piece. I've actually seen this in a lot of different devices that uh, people will look at an earlier design it's like you know we could make these two pieces into one if we actually just kind of you know connected them and it eliminates parts and when you eliminate parts then you eliminate screws and that eliminates labor and it makes things simpler and a camera has fewer parts and i'm all about simplicity so check the links below please I don't know who's going to have a problem with this. These are the actual pictures. This is the A7R2 over here, and this is the A7R over here. Now, well, the differences between the A7R and the A7R2 is that the motherboard on the A7R, and I'll actually show you over here, on the, the A7R is facing inwards towards the lens of the camera, the actual processor, and the heat shield is underneath that. Okay, and on the A7R2, the processor and heat shield, the processor uh, and all the heat is actually facing rearwards towards the rear of the camera, which in and of itself is no big deal. And the heat sink is on top of that. So on the A7R2, we have the processor and motherboard facing outwards with the heat shield, the copper heat shield, over top of that. On the A7R, we have the uh, processor and motherboard facing inwards and the heat shield underneath that and directly underneath that is the sensor. So it's inverse between the A7R and the A7R2. Now here's the neat part. This is the part that uh, Sony decided to make into one part and they incorporated the heat shield into this viewfinder retainer here. You can see that. And by the way, this is the heat shield on the A7R, and this is the, the heat shield on the A7R2. You notice that the heat shield on the A7R is like every other digital camera, basically. It's a piece that is fully contained inside the camera. And this is the A7R2 heat shield, which extends outside of the camera, and they use this piece right here. It's all one piece. The heat shield and the viewfinder retainer is used to replace this on the A7R. So this is irrefutable. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, the five pictures. Um, so what, you know, it's okay. It doesn't matter which way the, the, the darn motherboard is actually facing. That doesn't matter. The point is, is that they used a design change to eliminate a part. Here you can see, this is the picture I was looking for. This is the A7R2 over here on the right and the A7R here on the left. Now you see that this is copper and this is the viewfinder retainer. The viewfinder retainer is all one piece and it's incorporated as the motherboard heatsink. On the A7R over here, it's a small um, a piece of uh, sheet steel and uh, I have a picture of it here somewhere. Here we go. There's so many pictures. There it is. It's a symbol, a single piece by itself. This piece right here is also this piece right here. This is but the A7R. And so this is the reason for the design change and the failure. Okay. Heat shield on the A7R, heat shield on the A7R2. The viewfinder retainer ring on the A7R, this is it, and this is it incorporated into the camera, is totally autonomous and nowhere near the uh, heat shield but on the a7r2 they are incorporated as one piece and also the difference being is that here you can see that on the a7r2 the motherboard is underneath the heat sink uh, shield which is located near the magnesium backplate where the magnesium oxide corrosion forms but this ear design up here 
where the uh, the viewfinder retainer uh, piece has been incorporated into and as also the uh, heat shield is where the moisture is wicking in. Someone said, well, wicking means capillary action. And so you're not saying copper is porous. There are many definitions of uh, wicking. And it doesn't, no, obviously copper is not porous. So, I mean, I, you know, some people are so, so, so incredibly literalist. Like, when you say wicking, you know, do you mean like wicking of fiber? You know, copper isn't porous. No, you know, there's just a different... Uh, Different denotations of wicking, actually drawing in heat disparity wicking. You know, if you actually place, this is a fact too, if you actually place a piece of copper long ways and you have it, it's really hot inside or very cold outside or vice versa, and you took a piece of copper and you place that in between your door and then you shut the door, you know, if it's really hot outside and very cold inside, or very cold outside and hot inside, the moisture, obviously copper is not porous. The moisture will wick from one side to the other, depending on where it is, the condensation, the actual humidity. And that is the design flaw. It is irrefutable. It is undeniable. It is 100% hardcore right there, bold as day, ready to smack you in the face. I don't care what you think. You know, I used to fix cameras. I actually know how things work. My toys growing up weren't really toys. I loved to play with, like, broken stuff. And give me a screwdriver and a wrench, and I loved tearing broken things apart to see how the hell they worked. Done that my entire life. Um, work for companies diagnosing problems. Actually, when I worked at one of the world's largest printer manufacturers, they would monitor my phone calls all the time, and I could hear them because it made a static noise and uh, I asked my manager I said why the hell are you guys monitoring like all my phone calls I mean obviously I'm doing the job correctly I said his exact words were we want to know why you are they, they made charts of like how many calls were answered per hour and the correct diagnosis they wanted to know why I was like astronomically higher than everybody else in diagnosing uh, laser printers uh, so far as the repairman technician would call up or someone would call in, but they just said, we want to figure out why. It's not what we, you know, that we... And so anyway, <laughs> the point being is that take a look at the picture links below. It's irrefutable. It's undeniable. And uh, that's it. That's the difference between the Sony A7R and the A7R2 and the design change which has initiated and been the nexus, the prima causa, the locus of this, uh, of this, uh, of this failure. And, um, you know, when I posted the video yesterday, it was just a statement of facts like this, you know. What, what, what are you going to do? The pictures are right there. I mean, uh, actually, someone ignorantly actually said, well, that looks like an innovation. It's like, what, what, an innovation? There's no other camera. Even Sony themselves, Sony themselves on the A7R did not make this failure. You know, there's no other camera that has its heat sink sticking actually outside of the physical camera. That's a design failure. It's a heat disparity upon which the condensation wicks inside of the camera. So, and I don't know what anybody's going to say. I mean, they could hate this video or they could say, you know, I hate you. You just, you just don't like Sony. Well, you know, let's forget about whether I like Sony. Now, you know, these are, these are the pictures. These are the facts. You know, this is simplex design and simplex physics issues. And uh, what are you going to do about it? I mean, what's there to say? You know, oh, I hate you. You just don't like Sony. Um, well, let's just stick to the facts. Um, I was asked yesterday by a lot of people, well, why did not the A7R have this issue and only A7R2? Well, the five pictures are linked below. I just explained to you why. And um, actually, anybody with two d good eyeballs and more than four brain cells can look at the pictures and go, yeah, that's, that's, I see it. It's right there, you know. It's right there ready to smack me in the face. So, what do you want me to do about it? I answered the question. A bunch of people asked me to answer it, and I answered it. And uh, I spent the time to bring those pics up, and I was like, oh my god, you know, that's it. I see it right here. It's just as clear as day, so. You're welcome. You are welcome. Yes, there is actually a YouTube photography channel where someone actually knows how things works and knows how... Does this help you in photography? You know, is that going to make you take a better picture of the kitty cat? No. 
But what it does do is uh, gives you insight and information. It's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't buy this thing because, you know, it's got a design failure. You know, I, if I spend my hard-earned money on something, I kind of want it to last a while. You know, <clears throat> humidity is everywhere. It's not like you have to be near the beach, you know? I mean, I had my Nikon D500 out shooting for like six hours yesterday. I mean, it was humid as hell. And I am not within a thousand miles of any beach, you know? Or, or and they're not, I'm not even near a lake. I'm not even within 20 miles of a lake <laughs> that I know of. So, anyway, those are the facts. Don't like it. Doesn't matter to me. Deal with it. Those are the facts. Bye.